Greetings everyone, Father Hogan here, good to be with you. What a wonderful set of readings we have for today. I'd like to focus on the Gospel, which is taken from the Gospel of John. So if you haven't done so already, feel free to pause the video and to go grab your Bibles. Okay, then let us begin. Our Gospel is taken from the third chapter of the Gospel of John. And Nicodemus, he's a very well-known Pharisee. In fact, he <clears throat> lorded over the people about how much he knows of the law, and then <clears throat> imposes it on the people. And although he certainly has a very powerful title, that I think a very good spiritual lesson that we can learn from today's gospel is that just because you and I may have a title, maybe even about the faith, that does not guarantee or ensure that we can see the spiritual realities. So let me illustrate that point with a simple story, an antidote. I remember as a kid, how I didn't really like vegetables. I mean, as a kid, what, does any kid like vegetables? But especially in this instance, I remember sitting at the kitchen table and it was dinner and I had not eaten my corn at all. I ate my uh, main course or whatever, but didn't really touch my corn. And so I wanted to be excused to go back up to my room. And so my dad, being the very intimidating man that he was, said, you know, David, you're not able to leave the table uh, because you haven't even touched your corn. And me being the smart, uh, inquisitive young boy that I was, I simply touched the corn, got up from the dinner table, and walked upstairs. And my mom, I remember at the time, but she told me years later how she could barely uh, keep a straight face. That she was turning away. And to illustrate the point that I obviously was thinking literally, and I did exactly what he told me to do, but that did not at all reach the issue of me actually uh, consuming the corn, just what he intended me to do for my health. And on a much larger scale than simply eating corn, that Nicodemus is talking about the born in the spirit. He has a very realistic or naturalistic approach to this question, for he says, how can a man, once grown old, be born again? Surely he cannot re-enter his mother's womb and be born again, can he? It's painfully, obviously naive to think this way uh, if, again, if you don't really have that spiritual sense. And this doesn't all downplay Nicodemus, because again, he's a very strong, inquisitive uh, man. But what it's also very apparent is that God's ways is not our ways. And if Nicodemus is a teacher of the law, that he was simply relying on his ego, or another way of saying it, on scientism, on facts and proven realities. Uh, again, nothing against science. In fact, the church celebrates science. And if you, again, if you're interested in a great book, I highly encourage you to pick up the book, How the Church Saved Western Civilization. It goes on and on about a number of Catholic uh, men and women, lay and and clergy and so forth that have done great in the science world and for us to think if we simply base all of our knowledge on scientific deductive inductive reasoning we're missing out on the entire other component of knowledge that is our faith it'd be like almost me taking a telescope and looking into a sky and saying all i really know is what i can see through the telescope and for rationalists and people like Nicodemus, it's very easy to hide behind because, again, if that's all they see, then that's all they see. And yet what Jesus is referring to is not so much the literal or <clears throat> uh, exact explanation of what we can see, taste, touch, or smell, but on so much of a deeper level. Because, again, he recognizes the nature of the soul and of faith, for he says, the wind blows where it wills, and you cannot hear the sound it makes, but you do not know where it comes from or where it goes. So it is with everyone who is born of the Spirit. Again, there are many ways in which we can interpret Scripture. One, obviously, is literally. Another is through uh, seeing it through the end times, or seeing it through the life of Christ, the Christological approach. But in every way, we see how God is glorified through all the human components of human experience. We see that both faith and reason are necessary for us having a holistic approach to our faith. I think that practically speaking, the reason why Nicodemus may be holding on to this sense of faith and being able to see spiritually 
is because he's maybe afraid to let go of what God is trying to lead him to. That is, we are not our own. We're not in control of our lives. No matter how much science or study that we can pour into this world of knowing, it only is um, verifiable to a degree. And that God, being the God that he is, knows so much more than we do. He doesn't lord it over us, but actually wants us to know through our own human intellect and will to reach these deeper truths of faith. So what's the prescription for today? I encourage us maybe to go online and find the prayer of serenity. This prayer of serenity allows us to control the things that we can, and the things that we can we give to the glory of God. So as we go throughout our lives, we simply try not to amend it according to our own ways and our own heart, but knowing that God is always in control. That's always the better plan because when life is difficult, when tragedy strikes, it will not lead to falling into despair or blaming or comparison. We trust, acknowledge with the great gift of faith and courage that, again, God doesn't want evil to occur, but it's our willingly to accepting the trials of our lives that brings us some level of happiness in this life so as to reign with God forever. And let us pray. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, God, you are truly the Lord of life and death. We thank you for continually allowing us to be a part of this mystery of creation. Help us to accept the truths of faith you give to us, and also the great truths that, we can, that can be found through reason and using our rational minds. Help us to use both these great gifts to draw glory to you. For we make these prayers in your name, Jesus. Amen. In the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen. God continually wants to use both reason and faith to draw us into greater relationship with Him. The question is, are you willing and allowing Him to do so? God bless.